to faculty members. Today we are having a webinar on building chatbot design level one. Now I would like to introduce our resource person of today's session, Professor Abhishek Singh from Jam Ganga Institute of Technology and Sciences, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, sir has completed his bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering and his master's from um, Jan Ganga Institute of Technology in the field of embedded system, systems and VLSI design. His areas of interest are electronics devices and circuits, VLSI circuits and systems, data science using Python. He has guided more than 100 projects in undergraduate level and 220 in post-graduation level. He has published 20 research papers in various national and international journals. The languages known as uh, are Python and Verilog. And sir has uh, written many novels and uh, has un undergone many training and faculty development programs and workshops and conferences. And uh, as sir has conducted um, Python and its use in IoT, a short term training program which is sponsored by AICTE. And also, he had won many awards and achievements. Now, I formally hand over the session to uh, Professor Abhishek Singh, sir. Sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all respected dignitaries. Uh, teaching fraternity members and students. Thank you for this uh, warm introduction. So uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Vanay Ganesh sir for inviting me for this session. And uh, he told me about some time foundation. So I'll not waste much time further and will straight away jump to the uh, session itself. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll just share my screen first. Okay, uh, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so uh, it's a webinar on building chatbot design and it's level one. So as you can see, I haven't introduced myself on this first screen because just uh, I thought to, just to uh, let you see what actually chatbot means. So everybody, I think everybody has seen chatbot, used chatbot approximately on daily basis. So this is how something chatbot screen uh, looks like, a chatbot app looks like. Like here the user, which is me, I'm saying welcome to the lecture on chatbot. And the chatbot is responding, okay, hello, I am chatbot, who are you? And then I am introducing myself. Like I am Abhishek Singh, Assistant Professor in Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, Gyan Ganga Institute of Technology and Sciences, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. And then chatbot is just responding again, okay, nice, welcome Abhishek, all the best for your lecture. So this is how chatbots actually work in person. Okay, so this is what chatbot, the name itself signifies what it means. It is a bot, it is an automatic think which is chatting with you and the whole concept of chatbot is to train itself to make it learn how to conversation with uh, the person so these are the contents which i'm going to cover today what is chatbot why do we need a chatbot how versatile a chatbot is which means that what are different applications where chatbot are being used today then history and evolution types of chatbot, how are human languages processed by chatbots, architecture and work methods of chatbots, and then a small hands-on session uh, to demonstrate how we can use, how you can make chatbots. So moving on, what is chatbot? So there are numerous, numerous definitions available on Google. If you Google it, you'll find many definitions. 
uh, informal if i say a chatbot is an artificial intelligence based communication interface to interact with humans okay so it is ai based thing which is meant to interact with humans in their natural language they usually converse via auditory or textual methods and can effortlessly mimic human languages to communicate with human beings in a human like manner so if you have used or heard about alexa about siri about google assistant uh, in your mobile phones you must be using it daily then you must know that they all are some kind of virtual assistant they all are some kind of chatbots either either they uh, talk to you by some written messages like textual messages or in form of some audio voice you interact with them they are able to talk like uh, some human being says talking that's what it is written here they mimic human languages they communicate with us like a normal human being do and a chatbot is arguably uh, it is one of the best applications of nlp natural language processing now why do we need chatbot so the basic uh, uh, need is that uh, uh, cost and time effective of course uh, humans cannot be active on site 24 cross 7 uh, they need rest obviously but uh if you employ a chatbot uh just feed with some uh, predefined messages predefined response and they are available day and night for your help again cheap development cost uh, chatbots are very easy uh, i'll just demonstrate one chatbot in front of you how to make a chatbot and uh, what you will need one software nothing else uh, just to make a basic one if you want to make some fancy again you need some more softwares not enough uh, expensive things time effective also it is uh, you can moderate it according to your need now and then like you update your softwares uh, human resources so today chatbots can also talk with text the speech technology so it gives the feel as a human is sitting on some other side and talking with you and then business branding so businesses are changing with technology and chatbot is also changing evolving in fact uh, we will see later how it is evolving chatbots also helps in advertising branding of organization products and services and give daily updates to user so just just now we'll see uh, this was the topic uh, actually i put it in my contents that how versatile a chatbot is how much useful it is in what fields it is being used so let's see the versatility of chatbots how versatile a chatbot can be so if you see this is a uh, this is a whatsapp screen okay and this is a chatbot world health organization uh, just uh, introduced this their own chatbot uh, during 2019 uh, in the end of covid season when covid was at, uh, starting they introduced this chatbot Uh, so this uh, you you have to just uh, go to the link and it will open in whatsapp and you can just query your questions regarding um, covid situations all around the world and what it will do it will give you answers so this is nothing but chatbot like we are chatting to someone in whatsapp it is same like that only similarly uh, you must have seen dominos you must have got that app also their chatbot has got a name and that is dom so this chatbot what it do it guides you through their menu through uh, selection processes of items and through billing process everything and uh, we feel that okay we are talking to some person but in actually we are talking to some bot and uh, how versatile it is see here it is used in uh, medical field now here it is used in food industry national geographic channel started one uh, program that was called genius and for this their promotion they made one chatbot and it was just a, uh, as if you are talking to some uh, you are talking to einstein himself it was uh, so much clever so this is one branding Uh, promotion of by using chatbot and it was uh, uh, very well recognized and 
applauded all around the world that okay chatbot can be used for this purpose also similarly we have got kayak.com uh, which is a very popular uh, travel website you can go there you can book tickets you can inquire about uh, traveling field so this is now this is branding promotion by one very reputed channel and this is again uh, for uh, booking uh, airplane tickets similarly in IRCTC there is a chatbot which guide you how to uh, book tickets how to cancel tickets on train in India there are chatbots are being used in almost every industry in every field and this is the versatility of the chatbots now uh, i i thought to introduce this section of history and evolution because uh, this is level one and in future maybe i or maybe some other uh, resource person will uh, tell you about level two, level three, more advanced levels. So uh, you are in level one, so you must know about some history and evolution, how chatbots evolved and where are they today. Okay, so starting from point one, I'll just uh, cover it very fast. Joseph Wiesenbaum, he was a MIT graduate and he created the first chatbot, Eliza, in 1966. And in 200 lines of code that this chatbot was uh, uh, working like a physiotherapist, psychotherapist. Uh, it uses pattern matching, substitution methodology. I'll, I'll just uh, uh, tell you later what is this pattern matching tool is. And then it uh, start conversation with the people. Parry was constructed by American psychiatrist Kenneth Conway in 1972. And it was meant to uh, deal with people who are suffering from schizophrenia. Uh, it attempts to simulate the disease. Uh, Jabberwacky, again, this chatbot wa uh, was created by Rollo Carpenter in 1988. And it aimed to simulate a natural human conversation in an entertaining way. The chatbot is considered to use an AI technique called contextual pattern making, matching. Dr. S. Battiso is a chatbot created by Creative Labs for MS-DOS. And this chatbot was one of the earliest efforts uh, in which AI was introduced into a chatbot and was recognized for its full voice operated chat program. So initially, actually, uh, the thing was started because of boredom of people. People were bored, they were lonely, uh, there were disease all around people were suffering, they were alone. So these ch chatbots were created uh, with the purpose to just uh, calm them. Uh, these chatbots used to talk with them, people used to type anything, ask them anything, and they used to reply with some uh, pre-inbuilt uh, responses. Later on, chatbots evolved uh, from here. Like you see, now when AI was introduced, then chatbot started evolving. Alice. Alice is artificial linguistic internet computer entity and it is a universal language processing chatbot that uses heuristic pattern matching to carry conversations. Uh, heuristic means actually uh, you can say it by learning by trial and error. Learning by some uh, educated guessing work. In 1995, Richard Wallace pioneered the construction of Alice, and it was formerly known as AliceBot because it was first to run on a computer by the name of Alice. Now, from here, you are more familiar with the names. Smart Child, it was introduced in 2001, and it was the precursor, or you can say the ancestor of the famous Siri. Uh, if you are using Apple phone, uh, if you are not using Apple phone also, then you must, then also you must have heard about Siri. So Siri stands for Speech Interpretation and Recognition Interface. And it was first formed by Apple for iOS in 2010. Uh, it is intelligent personal assistant and learning navigator that uses a natural language user interface. And from here, the revolution starts for AI bots and personal virtual assistants. 
so siri paved the way siri started the revolution and chatbots became virtual assistants yeah google now google assistant if you are using uh, other than ios then google now and google assistant is in built in your phone uh, google launched it in 2012 it answers questions perform action through request made us uh, made to a set of web services make recommendations and you you must have used google assistant in calling in calling in in calling in uh, opening apps everywhere you you are using uh, google assistant now microsoft has got its own virtual assistant that is cortana uh, it uh, was built in 2014 developed conference and it becomes directly integrated into both windows phones devices and pcs windows 10 obviously this program uses voice recognition and relevant algorithms to get and respond to voice commands and the famous one alexa which is very popular developed by amazon in 2014 and is now built into devices such as amazon echo echo dot echo show and more there are more alexa apps and uh, actually amazon has allowed third party manufacturers to uh, manipulate alexa with their own themes with their own applications so uh, these are some famous these are some famous uh, chatbots from elisa to alexa chatbots have covered a wide revolution stage now chatbots basically if we say are limited to web embedded web applications like we saw here dom and uh, national geographic now these are generally today are known as chatbots and what this siri google assistant cortana alexa this category has now been known as virtual assistant because uh, you can talk to them in form of audio with the help of some ai artificial intelligence and machine learning they have started using their brains okay their artificial intelligence although they need very very superior training for that uh, but they are becoming more smart okay so in level 1 what we are going to see actually we are going to see the chatbots like these things okay in future when you will be familiar with these things then you will also be familiar with virtual assistant part that is i consider it at level 3 okay so talking about types of chatbots the rule based approach trains a chatbot to answer questions so there are uh, basically two types one is rule based rules okay some protocols so rule based approach trains a chatbot to answer questions based on a set of predetermined rules on which it was initially trained okay so there are two types one is rule based another one is self learning so rule based has got some predetermined rules we fed some rules okay and these chatbots won't deviate from their rules they will give you only those answers which are fed to them okay and today i'll demonstrate one rule based uh, chatbot so this is one of the most basic chatbots at level 1 stage you can make it without using any library in fact now these set rules can either be very simple or very complex while rule based chatbots can handle simple queries quite well they usually fail to produce a process more complicated queries or request okay because they are rule bounded they only reply those responses which are fed to them they are generally not ai based okay they don't learn by themselves whatever the uh, feeder the manufacturer the person who made do, uh, these chatbots uh, he or she fed to them they only know that much 
that's why self learning bots evolved now self learning the name itself suggests that they are self learning and they can learn on their own these leverage advan advanced technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning they use these technologies to their maximum to their fullest now uh, there is a word leverage and uh, there are many meanings of leverage but here in this context leverage means using up to maximum capacity so these self learning bots use these advanced technology of artificial intelligence and machine learning to their maximum capacity to train themselves from instances and behaviors okay naturally these chatbots are much smarter than rule based obviously they should be and self learning bots can be further divided into two categories one is retrieval based chatbots and another one is generative chatbots a retrieval based chatbot is one that functions on predefined inputs patterns and set responses okay it will retrieve it will gather the information it will take the information okay from the predefined patterns from the predefined inputs responses and once the question or and pattern is entered then chatbot uses a heuristic approach to deliver the appropriate response so these chatbots they have been fed with a specific question and their responses as well the responses can be more than one okay suppose i am writing hello then there can be response of hello hi good morning how are you vanakkam anything and chatbot will select one word either hi or hello or vanakkam and will response okay so that it will learn by trial and error that i am writing hello then it will not say how are you or it will not say okay uh, who are you because for hello i have fed response like hi i have fed response like vanakkam i have fed response like uh, uh, good morning so it will only learn by trial and error or some educated guess so it will not be something anything in air it will be a guess but it will be a logical one something educated one to deliver the appropriate response now the retrieval based model is extensively used to design goal oriented chatbots with customized features like the flow and tone of the bot to enhance the customer experience okay so these uh, retrieval based chatbots uh, what uh, what they are meant to be they are meant to be specific they have certain goals like like ircpc now the purpose of that chatbot is to tell you to help you with anything with railway train booking ticket cancellation availability of trains number of trains and uh, that is goal oriented that is goal oriented chatbot now it will not go beyond that and it will it is it will not start telling you about uh, airplanes availability okay another one is generative chatbots and generative chatbots are generally uh, made up of artificial language uh, machine learning so generative chatbots are not based on predefined responses they are not based on predefined responses like retrieval based chatbots they uses a combination of all learning algorithms available in ai and machine learning like supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning adversarial learning for multi step training and they can generate new dialogue based on large amount of conversational training data okay so they are not limited to the responses to the inputs that uh, human has fed to it by their learning with time they can generate new dialogues they can generate their own responses and this is what happening with alexa and cortana and google assistant that's why they have just crossed the level of chatbots and they fall into the category of virtual assistant they are just like a personal assistant personal secretary but not in physical form
Now, how are human languages processed by chatbots? So a chatbot is like a normal software application and like any other application, uh, there is an app layer, uh, it should have some database, some APIs obviously to call other external administrations. Now at the moment, what, uh, how bots are trained, uh, bots depend on the information available with them. So they obviously maintain a log uh, like we have in our phone call log. So we can scroll back and see when someone called me last time, how many times he called me. Similarly here, what bots do, they maintain a log of discussion and from that log of discussion, they just improve their responses every time. Suppose I am saying hi, the bot will say hello. And what bot will do? It will keep that discussion, hi and hello, in its memory. Sometimes, some other time when some new person will say hello, then it will know, okay, hello, I have to say hi. And this is how they keep on learning. Now, developers utilize these logs to analyze what clients are trying to ask. What, with a blend of machine learning tools and models, developers coordinate client inquiries and reply with the best appropriate answer. For example, if any customer is asking about payment and receipts, such as where is my product payment receipt and I haven't received, received the payment receipt, then for bot, both these sentences have same meaning. And this is how their uh, saving of logs, their analysis of logs help them. And in actual programmers like you, programmers like me, who are maintaining these bots, they actually use these logs of discussion. They fed the bot with these logs. And then only if I am a customer, I am asking, where is my product payment receipt? Some other person is asking, I haven't received, received the payment receipt. Then for my bot, both these questions are same. For him, for that bot, uh, the actual meaning is that somebody is asking about payment receipt. So it will take it as same meaning. Talking about architecture and work methods of chatbots, the chatbot architecture and work is based on three classification methods. First one is pattern matching. So uh, in previous slides, we saw this word pattern matching, pattern matching. So actually pattern matching means uh, there are some group of text, some group of words, and pattern is being matched, like, like if you see here, payment receipt, payment receipt. Okay, so it will, it will, bot will analyze this pattern. Now two questions, they have same pattern, they are asking for payment receipt. So bot utilizes pattern matches to group the text and it produces an appropriate response from the client. Artificial intelligence markup language is a standard a structured model of these patterns. So this AI ML is just like HTML, hypertext transfer language. And if you see the example here, obviously uh, this example has been taken from internet. So uh, if you see, there are tags and these tags are similar like HTML tags, body, paragraphs so here also. If I am writing a pattern, who invented email? And then I am giving a response according to Google, Ray, Tomlinson invented email. So uh, there are categories. In those categories, I am writing some pattern, I am writing some input, and I am giving the response also. Okay, similarly, another category. Do you know who, who is? So what it will do is may uh, someone ask who invented email? Or may someone ask that, do you know who invented email? then the bot should be able to recognize that both questions are same. So machine gives the following output, like human is asking who invented the email. And robot is saying, according to Google, Roy Tomlinson invented email. Now the chatbot knows the appropriate answer. Why? Because we have fed that related response also with that pattern. Similarly, the chatbot reacts to anything relating it to correlate patterns. Like here, I am correlating it. Do you know who 
then it also can answer this okay this person invented email because the bot has been fed with the patterns but it can't go past the related patterns okay it can't use its own brain it can't use its own logic and that's where algorithms are required that's where uh, ai and databases and the storing of logs they come they play their role so with a number of pattern combinations it makes a hierarchical structure we utilize algorithms to lessen the classifiers and produce the more reasonable structure so this was first approach this was first work method that is pattern matching and now the second is natural language understanding nlu and from here onwards you can say that uh, proper uh, ai and proper ml is introduced so natural language understanding nlu it is the ability of machine to understand human language like english and uh, uh, there are three specific concepts uh, uh, first one is called entity um, entities uh, like uh, what uh, is the idea uh, that we are feeding to the chatbot like i am using amazon for shopping then i will fed the idea to my chatbot that entity is e-commerce this is e-commerce similarly another one is context in what context uh, you have been you have been made you have been developed so like uh, dominos like pizza hut so that that chatbot is meant to context with pizza delivery pizza related things and the last one is natural language processing that is nlp the most advanced form and this is the actually you can say that this is the final type nlp is the final type and these alexa siri and all advanced chatbot from virtual assistant fall in nlp category like natural language processing chatbot finds a way to convert users speech or text into a structured data which is then utilized to choose a relevant answer so nlp is the final stage uh, when you come across with level 1 then you come across level 2 then level 3 or the most advanced form of chatbot is nlp uh, we call it virtual assistant like siri like alexa like google assistant okay and uh, nlp other than uh, theory wise like training model testing model evaluating it validating it there are two important things theory wise you should know and that is data pre processing data pre processing is the most important part of nlp and uh, for this the first technique is tokenizing the word tokens tokens means there are sentences and we break those sentences into words and those words are called tokens so tokenization is a way of separating a piece of text into smaller units called tokens here tokens can be either words characters or subwords okay and uh, tokenization can be broadly classified into three types word character subword and uh, uh, they all are tokens then next step is lemmatization so we can convert words into lemma form so that we can reduce all the canonical words it actually means that in tokenization the purpose is suppose here i am writing here i am writing where is my product payment receipt so what tokenization will do it will break this sentence into individual words now where then is then my then product then payment then receipt then someone said i haven't received the payment receipt then i will be thrown somewhere else haven't will be thrown somewhere else received a payment receipt so now this sentence has been broken into words and these words are then processed like here in these two sentences the common thing is payment receipt 
so now i will head my chatbot that okay if someone is asking about payment receipt then he is inquiring about payment receipt and my chatbot will learn that thing and another purpose is to remove any punctuation marks also a special symbols like suppose i am writing where is my product payment receipt and i am not using this question mark but someone is using this question mark so for chatbot this question mark has got no meaning so this is also a purpose of uh, tokenization to remove punctuation marks maybe i have got very good english i have got good grammar and writing skills i will use capital w here i will use question mark i will use proper commas and full stops but what is the purpose of that i am simply asking a question and suppose i am angry i don't have time to put all those commas and full stop i just ask i haven't received the payment receipt no question mark then chatbot should understand that okay meaning is same irrespective of any punctuations that is the purpose of tokenization what limitization do so limitization avoid repetition like i am writing play someone is writing playing someone write plays someone write played so for that chatbot has same meaning play because everyone is using some other form of tense some other form of grammar okay but their purpose is same they are asking same question in one way or another okay so limitization tokenization these two steps are very important when we are dealing with nlp and that's why if you see uh, google assistant alexa they are so popular because they grab the meaning they understand what the user wants to say they don't go for grammar they don't go for punctuation they go for words that are fed to them so using limitization we can reduce the number of total words in our vocabulary so we limitize each word and remove the duplicate words okay so uh, beyond these two concepts beyond these two concepts every step is same you need to get some words to train your chatbot then you need to test your chatbot then you need to evaluate the performance of chatbot and if you are satisfied okay my chatbot is responding pretty well then you just deploy it okay so uh, this was all about basics that i thought that you should know and uh, now keeping the time constraint in mind uh, i have got one chatbot one basic retrieval based chatbot and uh, i have opened it also to just to uh, skip typing time i have just made it here but uh, let's go through it okay so first i have written one print okay the prerequisite the prerequisite is that now chatbot is a is an application okay it is not that you are in learning phase of any programming language okay you should know the programming language then you can write some application you can build some app okay so uh, there are numerous languages available i am be using python here because it is pretty easy and this is a, a non gui chatbot okay so if you know javascript if you know some html css then you can make some fancy website you can make some fancy gui also for the time being uh, in 111 webinar part uh, we can go to uh, non gui part also so uh, what i am using i am using python and uh, this is version 3.8 and if you are using python then i strongly feel that uh, Uh, keep in mind the version print okay so the first thing is that i am printing bot and i am saying what do you want me to call you so what this means that bot is asking 
the chatbot is asking me what do you want me to call you and then user that is me and i will input my response so let's let's run this and see uh, how this happens how this works first and uh, let's see now bot will ask me this is the user screen that uh, you will see this is the back end part now client will not see this client will see this if if i am opening my website then the chatbot will come here and it will show okay what do you want me to call you and i will write that call me or whatever you want the bot to call you now then i have created two templates so uh, the question and answer session will start and bot will ask me something or bot will respond to something and username that is me i'll also ask so i am using here a placeholder or formatter you can say okay so placeholder or formatter uh, this that is important thing so again uh, that is uh, basic python string formatters you should know about let me run this also if you see here nothing will happen here because it it is linked to some other part later on now i am feeding my bot with some predetermined responses like name is zarvis you can put it any name now if you are familiar with marvel series zarvis is the virtual assistant of iron man so just i am fond of the movie so i put it here weather i have put rainy mood is happy and greet is hi okay now i i'll just show you what we are doing this is predefined input patterns and responses and how it will be used we'll see this one okay so now i am creating one dictionary again this is basic python concept so i'm creating one dictionary and uh, the name of the dictionary is responses so i am writing hello then placeholder is zero and dot format name so what is the name zarvis and the response is now this is key if you see here this is a key of the dictionary then i have created one list and there are two responses hi hello so what will happen hello some name and for this hello the bot can either response with hi or bot can either response with hello if you want more like uh, like if you want to write vanakkam then what you have to do you have to just put here comma and in quotes you have to write vanakkam similarly you can increase this list you can increase the words and what it will do it will just improve the dictionary of your chatbot learning process second question what i am putting what's your name so i have written here three responses they call me placeholder format name ya yeah, or it can also write i usually go by this name or my name is so again this is a list so this is the key what is your name and for this key the values can be anything among these three responses third question how's today's weather now the weather is either the bot can response with this or the bot can response with this or the bot can response with this thing and what is the weather i have put rainy i can put here sunny i can put here winter spring anything similarly are you a robot so now here i am asking are you a robot and the chatbot can response in either of these three responses all these are predetermined okay now how are you so i am feeling and some mood and mood here i have written happy okay uh, happy i uh, like here it is placeholder so it will write here happy how about you i am happy how about yourself okay so these are the responses and again see the way you have to write this you have to make a you have to create a dictionary then assign a key value then in a list i am giving multiple responses so the bot will select one response 
one at a time and it will give and this response will be random even the second time you ask how are you the earlier response can change then suppose i am not typing anything okay i am not typing anything uh, suppose everything is idle there is no conversation then bot can ask hey, are you there or what do you mean by saying nothing or sometimes saying nothing thanks a lot okay so these type of messages you can send and if if my question is out of the context if i am asking something which is not said in this uh, dictionary then you should write a default answer so there is one default answer that i have no idea about this okay so like here uh, hello what's your name like i asked what's your father's name now i haven't fed my chatbot with that question answer so that goes in this category that i have no idea about this okay now so let me run this thing also Now next part. I am importing one library that is random because now everything is going to be random, and I am making of one function how to respond. So I am making a function of responding, and if if message in responses. Now what is responses? Responses is my library. Here it is my dictionary. So if my message is in this responses part. if my message is in responses part then choose one random choice okay choose one random choice who will choose bot message will choose else else means my message is not in responses so what it will choose the default part okay the syntax is are pretty easy to grasp and then i will return the reply now uh, related text like uh, i am writing name instead of i am writing what's your name i am just writing name so it should understand that okay this thing is related what's your name and name are related what's today's weather if suppose i am typing weather then it should be able to understand that okay uh, the person is asking about what's today's weather if i am writing robot then person uh, then chatbot will able to recognize that okay he is asking about are you a robot how are suppose i am asking how are then it should able to know how are you else uh, there is nothing okay now these questions what's your name what's today's weather are you a robot how are you these questions are exactly similar to what you are writing in your responses dictionary okay so let's run these two cells also and and then uh, one function more to send a message so it will send message to user template and where is user template to you if you remember this is the user template so it will send message to me and similarly to bot template okay so while one it means that while this entire condition is true now this is a very basic bot i am not going into deep i am not writing else i am not writing too much things here because this is just to demonstrate how you can make initial level chatbot so what i am doing my input that i'll give and no matter if someone is writing it in upper case in capital letters using proper syntaxes and semantics i'll convert that into a lower case because suppose if you are uh, ordering pizza then you don't have time to follow the grammar okay the first letter should be capital uh, blah blah what you do you simply enter type of pizza pizza discount and you don't care about capital and small cases so what i'll do if someone is writing in upper case uh, i'll i'll convert it into lower case okay so related text i have got one related text also here this is related text okay so i am related to my input if someone writes name then i it will be related to what's your name okay 
then send message it will send message if my input is exit so i'm writing that okay i'm writing exit or i'm writing stop then the message should be thank you see you next time okay so let's and then i'll break break the conversation so let's see so now text box occurs my input occurs and it is asking me to write some input so let me write how are you how Let's see. Now Abhishek is typing, how are you? And bot is saying, I'm feeling happy. Okay. So from where it is taking, I'm feeling happy? If you see here, there are more than one responses. So it is telling I am happy, feeling happy. It could have taken this response also. It could have taken this response also. Okay, uh, let's uh, do some uh, node write related text. I am writing weather. So what's today's weather? I have no idea about this. Let's try to. Are you a robot? Are you a robot? Idea about this. How are you? What's your name? I usually provide a service. Okay. So here if you see, there is one answer for this. I usually provide a service. So now what is happening? This is, this is actually retrieval type. Okay. This is retrieval based chatbot. I have given some predefined input patterns and some responses. And my bot is responding along with those things those answers, those predefined answers. Now this is not a very good chatbot, obviously. There are plenty of space to even uh, make it better. Just to demonstrate uh, how to make a chatbot without using any chatbot library. Like if you if you have, uh, if you have go through some uh, chatbot experience or you are making chatbot, then you know that uh, there is one this one famous library. Now you see, I write here exit and thank you. See you next time. Okay. And for the time being, I was like not writing anything. Then it was saying, okay, okay are you there? So uh, there is one famous chatbot library that is called Chatterbox. Okay. Chatterbox is a very popular library. If you Google uh, chatbot, about chatbots, then Chatterbox is one of the most prominent library that it will uh, come in front of you in web pages. So you can use that library. Uh, I'm not using it. I'm just using one library only here that is random. I just wanted to demonstrate that, okay, without using libraries, uh, you can make some good chatbot also. You can improve this by uh, writing some more messages, some more responses. Uh, some more uh, related text here to uh, make your chatbot more intelligent. Okay, so uh, this was all about for today's presentation, uh, going by the time bound. And uh, I am just writing here my contact number and mail ID so that if you have any queries, uh, you can just uh, drop a mail or you can WhatsApp me anything and i'll try to help that i think we are uh, done in time sir
हेलो यस सर थैंक्स थैंक्स फॉर एक्सलेंसेशन सर वी होप आवर पार्टिसिपेंट विल टेक ए लॉट ऑफ न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड दे विल डेवलप देयर ओन बॉट्स एंड आई इनवाइट मिस्टर दिनेश टू गिव अ वॉट ऑफ थिंग्स thank you tilak we sincerely thank our institute of giving institute for giving permission to conduct this webinar we would like to thank principal sir dr l ganeshan vice principal sir professor s yes, rajakarnagaran and resource person professor abhishek singh for allotting his schedule towards this event we extend our thanks to faculty coordinator professor b kannan from ece and professor s yes, wadegan is from mechanical engineering student coordinators from arc mr m arvin m kumara group and mr gandhi madhyanathan and mr kausik mr p r vijay jagannath and finally my dear participants without your presence this event is an unimaginable we would like to continue your valuable persons during upcoming event thank you thank you 100% care